Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Behind the Beat. My name is Chris Langan, and today we are going to be doing Evolution of a Groove number two. Uh, if you haven't seen the first installment of Evolution of a Groove, then please go into my uh, playlist and take a look. The whole idea with this lesson is to show you that, um, you know, you can expand upon any beat you know. Um, you know, a lot of beginner drummers gets, you know, they, they may have a beat that they like to play, and that's really all that they do with it. For instance, something, you know, like your basic eighth note rock beat. Well, there's a lot of stuff you can do with that without really changing much of what's happening between your snare and your bass drum. You can take your right hand, you know, throw some accents in, move it to a different cymbal, move it to a tom. So that's what we're going to be uh, exploring today. Now, if you saw the first one, that was a pretty simple groove. The one that we're going to be doing today is a little bit more intermediate, maybe even, be, you know, uh, beginner advanced. So um, let's just check it out. Let's just see. Uh, if you can hang, awesome. If not, hey, it's on video, so um, you can rewind it as many times as you need. All right, so let's start off with just the basic skeleton of this groove. What is it we're playing? All right. Well, here it is. Okay, we've got eighth notes on the hi-hat. The kick drum is playing one, a, uh, and. So one, and, a, uh, two, and. And four and one and a two and three and four and one and a two and three and four and okay. All right, so the first thing we can do with that is throw some accents on the quarter note. So on beat one, two, three, and four. Just accent, little bit harder of a hit than normal. Something like this. All right, for the next example, we're going to accent the ands, okay? This will give it a little bit of a offbeaty feel, so something like this. Okay, now you may be wondering, how are you getting those accents? Well, all I'm really doing is playing with the tip of my stick for the unaccented parts and really just moving to the shoulder of the stick for the accented parts. So something like this. Okay. Uh, that's one way you can get your accents to pop a little bit more than, you know, without having to really, like, swing your arm and hit it hard. Okay. 
Let's see, what do we have next? All right, well, we're gonna open the hi-hat now on the ands, just like we did the accents. Now we're gonna crack the hats open a little bit. And when I say open your hi-hats, you really only have to lift your toes. I don't think you ever get a really good sound by completely separating the cymbals. It just sounds too washy. So by just gently lifting your toes, you get a nice, clean, washy sound. All right, so opening on the ands. Here we go. All right, our next example, we'll open the hi-hat on the quarter note. So on one, two, three, and four. Sounds like this. All right. Okay, moving on. The next thing we can do is simply move our eighth notes from the hi-hat over to the ride. Okay? Um, we're not doing anything different here. We're just playing the eighth notes in a regular pattern on the ride cymbal. Okay? It'll sound like this. All right. Now, I don't have it written in the sheet music here, but if you're feeling ambitious and you want to, you can add your left foot as well, playing either um, eighth notes right along with your hand. You can play just the quarter note. Or you could play the ands. Okay, that's a little bit of a bonus. You could throw those in there if uh, if you're able to. So, okay, moving on. The next thing we could do now is start throwing in some bells with the ride. So we'll start off by playing the bell on the ands. It's gonna sound like this. Alright, now play the bell on the quarter note. All right, moving right along. Next thing we could do, play our eighth notes on our floor tom, okay? And it'll sound like this. Completely different, uh, different sounding groove now. OK, 
Okay. Now, again, anytime you're moving your right hand away from the hi-hat and playing it somewhere else, feel free to uh, play a pattern with your left foot like we did before, whether it's eighth notes right along, quarter note, the ands, whatever. Okay, next thing we could do. Now, we're over here on our floor tom with our right hand. Let's try moving our left hand to the rack tom, and it'll give us a totally new feel. Here we go. All right. Moving along. The next thing we can do. I have a stacker here. Maybe not everyone has a stacker, but maybe you can use a crash cymbal or uh, an open hi-hat. What we're going to be doing here is playing the quarter note. Okay, So we're going to be switching from an eighth note pattern with our right hand to just the quarter note. I think it sounds good on a stacker or like a china. It gives it that thrashy, heavy, heavier metal feel. Here's what I mean. Okay. Again, if you don't have a stacker, play it on a crash. Uh, maybe you have some other type of, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Maybe you have some other type of accessory symbol. Uh, you know, whatever. Again, if you wanted to just do it on an open hi-hat, you can do that as well. Okay. Now, with the same idea, we're going to play on only the ands, okay? So it'll be the quarter note, but on the and. Here we go. All right, moving right along, we've got two more left at the last thing here, uh, second to last thing here. It's going to be 16th notes. Now you can, I have it only uh, written up here as on the hi-hat, but you certainly can move it to the ride or wherever, okay? I'm gonna demonstrate on the hi-hat, straight 16th notes. Now, if you're having trouble playing 16th notes that fast with one hand, you can do the double-handed hi-hat, uh, where you basically are, are losing a 16th note because you have to come over to play your snare, but it's not that huge, huge of a deal. Here's what it looks and sounds like. All right, thanks for hanging in there, guys. We've got one more left. Last pattern we're going to do is we're going to make this linear, okay? So linear, meaning 
no two things hit simultaneously. I have it orchestrated here on the hi-hat. You could move it to the ride or wherever. Okay, so I'm going to take this one slow for you. It's going to be one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. I even had trouble with that. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Let me try it a little bit faster. Okay, I'll slow that down one more time for you. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. All right, guys, I hope that that has been helpful for you and, you know, showed you that you can do more with, than, with a groove than just play it as is. Um, this will really show other musicians, you know, that you're in a band with, that you have some dynamic range. You can, you can move around and get different voices, uh, you know, and it might make the part for that song that much better just because you are able to move around. All right. Well, I plan on making more evolutions of more grooves, so stay tuned, guys. Make sure you hit the subscribe button for more content like this. We've got drum covers, drum lessons, gear reviews, um, guest drum teachers coming and sitting in. Also, find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, www.chrislangendrummer.com. Until next time, we will see you guys at the next lesson.